Hello and welcome, dear Christine. It's so great to have you with us today for the next 45 minutes to one hour. We are all so excited, me and my audience, all the realtors that are looking forward to hearing you and hearing um, how outsourcing and having others that are from, like, say, India, Philippines, we're going to talk about some of the countries that offer help and how can that help them in their everyday business. And, uh, yeah, so we are very excited to have you. But before we start, Christine, would you please introduce yourself to the audience and say who you are and what you do and all the lovely things about you? Oh, well, thank you, Tani. First of all, thank you for inviting me on the call today. I'm really excited to talk about how, you know, some of your realtors who are interested in building virtual teams, you know, how, um, you know, with my experience, and I've, I've built, a lot of, uh, built a lot of teams, and I want to share that knowledge. And, uh, but, yeah, I... Um, I'm really excited to be here. Um, you know, I, uh, I'm a real estate investor first and foremost, and that's actually how you and I met. Um, we met. I think it's almost been ten years to Hanny, so it feels like uh, you know, it feels like I've known you forever. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's all yeah at exactly. We met at a rain event, and uh, yeah, we've been great friends and uh, and uh, got to work together on on a few projects. I'm uh, the author of the book. Uh, co-author, uh, Secrets of the Canadian Real Estate Cycle, and Tahani, you graciously contributed to uh, the contents of that book, so I really appreciate that. Oh, and thank you for asking, and that's a must-read for all realtors or every investor, too, you know, for anyone who's interested in or part of this real estate industry. So, yes, it's a phenomenal book, so I highly recommend it. It's actually right there in the <laughs> back, if maybe you can bring it a little bit closer to show the audience, yes, so that they can see Yes, it. this is... Uh, yeah, this is the the book. It was uh, it was uh, co-authored with Greg Head and Don Campbell, and a gentleman named Kieran Trask. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of great information in there that um, that I think could really help agents um, as well. It's uh, it's not just for investors. It's a really good uh, it's a really good teaching tool on how to be a strategic investor and understand the real estate cycle and how to how it affects the market. So. Um, yeah, so that's uh, you know that's what I've been up to the last few years, and of course I'm uh, with a company called Viral Factory, and that's I think mm -hmm. what has brought us uh, you know together today because uh, Viral Factory um, is a company that uh, that has been building or using virtual teams uh, to provide services uh, specifically to realtors. Um, but you know, and I'm a client, and we will talk about that in a exactly. bit. But I'm a client as well of Viral Factory. Exactly. But you know, being with Viral Factory, I get asked a ton. You know, how you know where do you get your resources from, and how do you um, you know how do you outsource? That's kind of probably the most common, um, it's probably the most common term um, you know that's used when you when you get um, your um, workers from other um, parts of, of the earth and the world. Yeah, the world yes. exactly. Um, you know, so. And you just had a, a talk at, at the Calgary Women event in Calgary, yeah. right? Just a few months ago, just about the same subject. It's like, how do you outsource? How do you hire assistance from other parts of the, the, the world? Exactly, yes. It was uh, at the, the Kreb uh, Women's Show, and it was a fabulous event. It was very well attended. And, um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, so many agents, um, you know, they work um, – you know, they work by themselves or they work in smaller teams. And so I think it's becoming a lot more common for them to want to reach out and find other, um, you know, resources to help them. And, you know, I, I live in Alberta. I, I am from Grand Prairie. But, you know, um, when you're from Alberta, we have the, the big oil companies and we have to compete against them. So, you know, when people say to me, um, you know, Christine, why do you outsource? And, and in fairness, I've been outsourcing probably for about 10 years. So this isn't something that's wow. new for me. Yes. Yeah. In my company, we've had um, virtual assistants for at least 10 years helping with, you know, a variety of different tasks. And I'll, I'll get into, you know, some of the, um, the tasks that, we, that we've outsourced and what you can outsource as well, too. But, um, you know, obviously awesome. the first and, and foremost is, is obviously the cost. Um, you know, in Alberta, we have to compete, um, you know, for um, – we have to compete with the oil companies um, for wages, and that makes it really tough. You know, very high. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's very, it's very, very high. hard to compete when you, you know, when somebody can just walk across the street. They don't necessarily want to work for you when they can go get a very large wage from, you know, from uh, another company. So, um, you know, you know, that's that's really the main reason why um, why I've actually had to outsource in order to make my my business successful is because I, I have oh, that's brilliant. That. yeah and and I think the other um, you know the other reason why outsourcing is really popular is because um, and, and let me just take you back I think that um, you know 
I don't know, Tani, if you want to go back to social studies in grade eight, but, you know, the Industrial Revolution, <laughs> um, you know, the start of the Industrial Revolution back in the good old days was the steam engine. And, you know, that that steam engine, that really affected every single, um, you know, it, it affected where houses were built, it affected where, uh, you know, towns, uh, towns were established, it affected where work was. I mean, it, it affected everything. And if you fast forward to today, um, really, there's a, it's called the virtual revolution, and that's really what's happening today. And the internet is the star of this revolution. And so the internet has really made, um, it's really made outsourcing, uh, you know, it, it's just blown the cover off of, you know, this one. It's made, it's also made the world smaller. Absolutely. I think that's what you're saying. So even though we are, you are um, interacting with people in, you know, the far east, but yet it seems like it's just so smaller because of the computers and everything else. Exactly. The internet has reached like just, you know, almost every corner of the earth. And, and um, you know, and then that's really opened up this huge global workforce that we've never had before. And so that's, you know, it, that's, you know, opening up a, a global workforce. So, yes. you know, when it comes to outsourcing and, and creating virtual teams, I mean, we couldn't get a better environment, you know, right now. Um, it, and that's good news for the realtors that are listening because I feel that, you know, realtors, we tend to get caught in the smaller things of our business, like, you know, all the little papers where in reality that does not make us the money. We need to concentrate exactly. more on meeting the clients and going out and selling, doing what we're good or meant to do. So this would be a great opportunity for all those who are listening and want to do this. Exactly. Well, and I think, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, we talk about what you can outsource. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the times it's just, it's, it's simple, but it's not. So we always suggest that you, um, when you're thinking of the tasks that you want to outsource, so for an agent, you want to outsource the low complexity, high value tasks. So a lot of the mm. time, that's, you know, a lot of administration duties. Um, yeah, mundane tasks. Exactly. So it's, it's, you know, you might not be able to outsource every little bit, but when you think about it, you know, as you're an, you know, as an agent, you know, what are those things that you do all the time? Um, you know, one of the things we do in our company is, um, just I was just at a trade show actually on on uh, last Wednesday, and we um, received a lot of business cards. Um, so, is that worth my time to go in and enter those into my database and and do that? No, it's not. So we actually that's one of the tasks that we have our virtual assistants and our team doing. So. Well, that's brilliant. Actually, I want to stop you there for one second, Christine, and I want everyone on this call to grab a paper and a pen, actually. Maybe we should have said that <laughs> before because there's a lot of things that you're going to be sharing that is very, very important. And that is probably what I heard from you right now is to list or put down all those tasks that are Low, they're like not income producing. Yeah. Exactly. They're no high value. They're not high, but yet they need to be done. Example that you just gave right now is when you go out to networking meetings and you get all these business cards and instead of you spending hours typing them, that's something that you can actually outsource. Exactly. Oh, perfect. Yeah, exactly. You know, those are, those are the things that are going to free up your time to make you money so you can go all do the important things like selling houses. You know, that's the last yes. thing you need to be, it, unless you're, the only time you should really be chained to your desk, I believe, is when you're prospecting and you're on the phone making money, not when you're typing in, you know, menial tasks. And, and, it, and they're, they're menial in the sense that you shouldn't be doing them, but you need somebody to do them. So you don't want to be yes. le leaving that stack of business cards on your desk never to get put in your database because every, every business card you have essentially is generally worth $1,000. So you don't want to be throw throwing $1,000 bills away. Oh, that's interesting what you just said right now. I don't know even if the audience is actually um, can comprehend that idea, but that is something that is more and more being said out there that a list is very, very important and a name is now worth about $1,000 exactly. to anybody's business. Yeah, every name in your database is is, uh, um, is technically supposed to be worth about $1,000. So, you know, every time you don't enter that business card in or, or, or you know, add that contact information, it's, it's just sitting there. So you want to make sure that that gets in there, but it doesn't have to be you that does it. And, and I think yes. that's the trick is, is it doesn't all, it does not all um, land on the agent's shoulders. Um, you know, that's where you want to build your virtual team up and, and have them, you know, help you with those low complexity, high value tasks. Some other tasks to Hani too are um, calendar management. I know, um, you know, and, and not only for work, but, um, you know, 
let's say, um, you know, we're all busy professionals. I have kids' schedules. I have sports schedules for my kids. I have my own sporting schedules, and then I have my work schedules. So when I have a, a meeting, I always CC my, my assistant, and she en enters that into my calendar. Um, anytime I get a, um, a kid's schedule, like a sporting schedule, I do the same thing. She puts it in my kid's sporting um, calendar, and then that way I'm completely organized, but it's not me. Like, you know, I, I know I, I, because I'm, when I'm trying to add things into my calendar on my own, I'm, I'm not focused on it. I don't want to be focused on it. I'm cranky about it because it's yes. not worth my time. So I send that to my assistant and then she organizes everything. So it's not just my work calendar. I mean, my work calendar is always very structured, but she also adds in all of the extracurriculars. So it's not, yes. you know, it's personal stuff. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And I mean, that's at the lowest level, the calendar management, could you do postings and Craigslist postings? Those are, mm -hmm. that's repetitive. It's, it's very repetitive. Again, low complexity. It doesn't take a lot to do that. Um, you know, but, but that really helps. Um, yeah, I'm already mentioned, you know, database management. Then you can also go to other tasks as well to Henny that are kind of more, um, you know, medium complexity, high value. So I don't know about you, but um, bookkeeping, um, QuickBooks finally went online. And so now oh, really? it did. Oh. that was just probably a year ago. So I've um, switched everything. Everything in my company is now um, with QuickBooks online. And so I can have it and it doesn't matter if I'm if my bookkeeper is in um, in Alberta. It doesn't matter if my bookkeeper is in the Philippines or India or um, it doesn't matter. It, you know, it, she could be down the street from me. It doesn't matter where I'm outsourcing my my bookkeeping to. So so interesting. Like, how do you do that then, Christine? Like, um, I mean, I still want to talk about other things that they can do, but like um, maybe later on when you're done about what else they you know, these assistants can do, maybe we can go like and dig a little bit deeper into how can you get, um, hire a bookkeeper and get them to help you with those. Because I'm thinking in my mind, well, it's better if they're here and I can give them all the receipts and then we can <laughs> interact. And this is what I'm thinking, but I would love to, you know, and I'm sure it's not just only me. I'm sure there's all these realtors right now that are listening, thinking maybe it's the same. So we would love to hear your Absolutely. opinion on that. Well, so let's continue maybe with other mundane tasks that maybe you recommend. Social media. Exactly. Let's talk about social media, Twitter and. Well, and I mean, that's, that's my, uh, you know, that's, that's what I do every day. So of course, and, and you being a viral factory client to Hattie, you obviously understand. So um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, social media, um, blogging, of course, you know, getting, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, I know when you came to us to Hattie, you didn't have time to, you know, write all your blogs. Blog. Exactly. And, and that's, I think, uh, that's so critical for agents nowadays. You want to start building those relationships online and, and being able to do that. But who has the time to blog? Because, you know, you've written a book. We, you know how to write. I know how to write. I don't even have time to write my own blog. So, um, you know, that, uh, that in itself um, is, you know, it, it's, it's just a huge, um, it, it's just huge to be able to outsource that. So, you know, what we do with you every month is we, um, every couple months is we have a meeting with you. We get your ideas for your blogs. We write them. And then our team goes and they post on all of your social media. They post your blogs and they tweet for you and they, um, you know, and they do that. And, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can hire. Um, you can hire and try and train somebody to do that. Um, you can go onto Odesk and, and there are people who do write blogs. Um, there's blog writing services. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as well, too, as to, you know, where to go and, um, and the foundation that you need actually to hire a virtual team. Um, Excellent. But yeah, there's now now with this virtual revolution, there's a lot more services out there that that um, you know that that can um, instead of the agent, you know, like really, Tahani, you don't need to know how to load your blog up. You don't need to know how to you know. I mean, you know how to tweet, you know how to Facebook, but you don't need to spend your time doing that. You can Absolutely. Facebook and tweet on the um, on the other important you know events in your life or or the significant things that you want to post on. But once you have that meeting with us and we get all your um, ideas captured for your blog, we write them for you and, uh, and we make sure that the team at Viral Factory, Factory gets those out and, uh, and post them for you. So, you know, it's, it's almost a, um, um, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a different, it's a different kind of outsourcing and it's not, uh, it, you know, you don't have to just have one person do it. You can have a higher team to do it. 
Yeah, and we want to talk about that, um, you know, hiring one versus hiring a team. I chose to hire you as a team because I felt like I can come to you, Christine, and then you go out and you bring all of your team together to help me with whatever I want. So for me, I want simplicity. But there are other realtors that maybe want to do it themselves. Exactly. You know, there's always just like renovations, you know. Yeah. You could hire a contractor or you could do it yourself. So for me, I chose to hire the contractor and then for others, they choose maybe to do it themselves exactly. so um yeah maybe what are how how would you go about exactly. if you want to be the contractor you know themselves yeah. that they want to do the work exactly. how would you go about doing that? well there's a few things that you need to do and, and this is regardless of what you know if you're if you're outsourcing social media if you're outsourcing anything like it doesn't matter what you're outsourcing you need to have a foundation mm -hmm. in place you can't just pick up and and say okay you know today i'm going to outsource you need to you need to do a few things and uh um, you know, to have in place or else you won't be successful. Um, so the first thing you need to do is you have to be on the cloud. You, you know, so, you, and, and definitely you want to write that down. You have to be on the cloud. You have to make sure that you've got, um, you know, you've got internet access that other people can have access to, other people can have access to your files. I mean, not every file that you have, but whatever they're going to need to make their job um, successful. Um, you know, it's, you uh, um, a lot of people can, can be a little bit afraid to put, um, you know, let's say, for instance, Dropbox. I mean, that's an example of getting your, your files on the cloud. Yes, a lot of people yes, are afraid yes. to have to put all their files in Dropbox because they think if they don't have it on their computer, um, you know, then, then somebody else will get it. But, you know, those companies like Dropbox or um, Jungle Disk or there's, there's quite a few other companies, even Google, you know, like you can you put everything in Google uh, Docs. They spend, yeah millions, billions, I don't even know what their budget is, making sure that, you know, their their house doesn't burn down and that, that they don't lose everybody's data. And, um, you know, so for people who aren't... It's a myth. So you're saying it's a myth for um, realtors or people in general to think that if it's in Dropbox, that means somebody can have access to it. Well, I think that, I mean, there there's always the chance that they can have access to it. Um, I think whether you're on your computer, if somebody's going to hack, they're, they're going to hack. Yes. But you're a lot safer to put all of your, um, you know, all of your information on the cloud because a it's backed up and and there's a lot of sophisticated systems. So if your computer crashes and everything's on your hard drive, you're pretty much out of luck, you know. And and how many times have we seen that happen, you know? So um, you know, so there's um, when you want to build a virtual team, you have to make sure that your information is accessible because if you if it's not accessible, that means you're going to have your assistant. Um, or your team members coming to you and you're always going to have to be sending them a file. It, it's not going to work. So you need to make sure that you get um, any information that, that needs to be accessible to um, a virtual assistant has to be accessible on the cloud. So they can ac ac access it, pardon me, at any time of the day because they might not be on the same schedule. They might be working while you're sleeping or vice versa, yes. you know, so it, so you have to get on the cloud. So, you know, go on Gmail, get your cloud, get your, um, all your files on the cloud, get your calendars on the cloud so that your calendars can sync. Um, and, uh, and all of your contacts as well, like your database. So, you know, getting your contacts, um, um, getting your database, um, in there as well. So that, that, uh, that your teammates, um, when you're ready to outsource, um, they will have access to that. Quick question, Christine. How do I get my calendar on cloud? What does that mean? Um, actually, you probably already have it. I'm pretty sure that uh, that Ramsey probably already has you on there. But um, it's it's when you use like a Google Calendar to Hanny. So if you have a Google Calendar, and then you can share that with anybody. So I have a Google Calendar that I have set up, and I share that with my virtual assistant. I actually have a few different calendars. I have a work one, a personal one, and then one for my my children. So um, yeah, so you just get set up on, on Gmail, you get a Google Calendar, and, uh, and then you can share that with whomever you want. Excellent. I'm asking also, not only just for myself, for also those who are listening, probably thinking about the exactly. same question I'm thinking, exactly. right? So that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. What else also you need to do to set up um, yourself? Well, the, the next thing that you need to do is password management. And, uh, you know, in this day and age, um, everything has a password, and most of us forget our passwords. <laughs> Myself, I'm one of them. Exactly, we all are. So, Tani, you're familiar with the the um, the tool that I'm going to talk about. It's called LastPass, and it's L A S T P A S S. And actually, I'll provide you. I've got links to all of the. Um, I've got links, and, and I'll provide that to all of um, all of your listeners today, so that they don't have to. Oh, that's Google. awesome. Thank you. I'm sure they're going to appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, you know, so many of us um, before our, our password management tool was an Excel sheet or we'd write them down and, or we'd have the same password for every single every single platform that we had. But LastPass basically means you have to remember one password and you can store all your passwords 
in this one program. Again, it's a secure program. But what it enables you to do is it enables you to share your passwords. So, Tahani, if you and I were working together, and, and which we obviously have, your last pass is set up with all your passwords, and then you've shared them with our company. So we're able to go in and, and work in your um, platforms, um, and you are still in control. So if you decide at any time that you want to unshare that password, in LastPass it allows you to do that. So you're in control of it. So instead of you calling up and saying, oh, you know, my password is 123456, um, and then if you decide that uh, you're not going to work with that assistant again, then you have to go change all your passwords. Instead of doing that, you just go into LastPass and you hit unshare. I, can we touch on the security part of that as well? So for those who are right now listening and thinking, oh, but this is so scary, you know, you're giving your passport to someone that is in the Philippines, India, China, what are they going to do, you know, with your information? So how would you um, respond exactly. to that? Exactly. Well, you know, I mean, I've been, I've been using LastPass, and again, I've been using, um, I, I've been using virtual assistants for many years. And, and before the systems like LastPass came in, I had to hand out my passwords, <laughs> so it really wasn't secure. What's nice about LastPass is they can have access, but they don't actually see your passwords. So, I mean, there's still a trust. It's no different than any employee. Like, when I, what I find is um, working with people from um, different countries, to me, is no different than working with somebody sitting across the desk. You still have to trust them, and you only, you really, it's not yeah, a lot different, point. right? You know, so you either trust them or you don't. And and I think that, um, so for me, handing over my passwords is really not a big deal. And I think with LastPass, it just makes it a lot easier. So that let's say I do have to terminate somebody, it's just a click of a button, as opposed to what I used to have to do before is go in and change every password. And a lot of people never went back in and did that when, you know, when they terminated. So it was, it was a lot riskier. But I don't find working with people from different countries any different. You know, it's, it's the same as you and I having this conversation. You're on, on, you know, in Eastern Canada, I'm in Western Canada, it's, you know, but we're, you know, just a, you know, a, a that's, side uh, That's important. Yeah, that's important point that you just touched on, Christina, because, you know, I mean, here in the office, I give the keys to my assistant and it's a trust issue as well. So it's either you work with people because you trust them already or not. And that's part of the due diligence that you're going to talk about shortly when hiring someone from a different country, right? It's, How do you... Um, do the due diligence. Yes. Is there anything else in terms of building the foundation, Christine? Yeah, exactly. And, and to Hattie, that that's exactly the point. You know, if, uh, um, it, it doesn't make a difference where, where they're from. When it comes to hiring, I mean, there's there's a few different, um, I, I mean, I, my hiring process is no different than if I'm hiring and, and interviewing somebody, you know, across my desk or if I'm hiring somebody um, from the Philippines. Most of, most of my um, virtual assistant team members are from the Philippines. Um, so everything is... Uh, you know, everything is, is the same. I actually, um, what I find is um, I use uh, the disk profiling. Have you ever tried that, Tahani? Have you ever used disk profiling? Um, I, that's one of the tools that I, that I use when I'm hiring um, anybody. Yes. Um, and actually, Tony Robbins has a great... Can, can, you, can you guess what I am with a disk profile? <laughs> uh, well, I tell you, we, we, I, think, I think high D, high I. Absolutely, yeah. 99 99 99 Love it. which means they told me that I, I can actually switch b between when I need to be personal and when I need to um, become the driver. A D stands for the driver, an I stands for influential, yeah. is that what Influence, it is? Exactly. A C stands for... Um, oh, I always go, I it sounds terrible, uh, compliance, and, and then and S is steadiness. Yes, exactly. And I'm very little on those two things. I think 24, 24. So, exactly. so I need, I need support people around exactly. me to do this. For exactly. Me. And so for those of you who are familiar with DISC, when you're hiring somebody, you know, I would imagine there's a lot of agents who are high D, high I. So what you want to yes. do, and, and I think when you're hiring people, and this is why I like using DISC, because when you're hiring people, you want to stay away from the people who are exactly like you. You want the people with the highest high C. And that's, yes. and, and so, I mean, I use it as a tool, um, you know, obviously we, we have, uh, we have people who, who vet, um, you know, who vet our um, applicants, but we use disc profiling all the time as a tool. And actually Tony Robbins has a, a great free um, disc profiling. Um, there's a link actually, and I'll, I'll provide that to, uh, to oh, the audience, awesome. yes. but yeah, he has a, a free um, disc profile um, that you can, that you can run. And, um, and there's also other programs as well that you can get that are a little bit more in depth if, if you know, if, if, uh, um, 
your agents are interested in that. But I, I think the Tony um, the Tony Robbins one is is just is great. And what we do actually is I, I uh, when I find a candidate, um, I have um, I have my assistant actually interview them, and then they they have them do the disc profile, and then that comes to me. And that, you know that just gives us a great foundation for you know jumping off of and and, and working in the interview process. Um, you know, for, for hiring though, but you know, I'll, I'll back it up a little bit. Like, where do we hire? Well, well for virtual assistants, there's a few different places. Um, you might have heard of Odesk. I don't know if you've actually ever tried to hire anybody off Odesk before. I we have we have used Odesk a lot. Yes, Odesk. And again, maybe is that going to be on a list? It, as it, well? it is. I've got everything. Okay, on there. excellent. So Odesk is, is there. Odesk. Um, I haven't had great success. Um, it's you can hire anything, anybody to do pretty much almost anything on Odesk. You know, so from administration to writing to photoshopping, um, you know, if you have photos, um, I mean, anything like video, putting videos together. Um, I find with Odesk, it's, it can be very overwhelming. It's like you, you can post a job and get, you know, 500 replies back um, and not necessarily all quality. So I think that with Odesk, you know, it's, it's great for one-off services. Um, also, Elance is very similar. So, you know, if you just need a little project done, like sometimes I need Photoshopping, um, yeah. Photoshopping done, uh, like I can go onto Odesk and find somebody and then pay a, uh, an inexpensive rate to have them do a one-off project. And that's what we use it for as well, Christine, yeah. is that, you know, for just the one uh, job, but not necessarily for a continuous exactly. Um, hire. Exactly, yes. yeah. And so for our continual hires, um, we use a company called VA International. And again, I've got the link. Uh, I've mm -hmm. got the link to that. VA International, um, those are the team members that you've met, actually, our, our viral factory team members. And I mean, I have to say, amazing. Annie, they're amazing. I mean, Mark. Amazing. And I'll tell you, some of them speak better English than I do and can write better English than I do. Me I mean, too. they're writing my vlogs. They're amazing. They're amazing. Absolutely. You truly have a class people. Yes. Oh, thanks, Tani. Well, Mark, uh, Mark is our, um, Mark from yeah. BA International. He's got a great pipeline. And those are the kind of um, people that he's sourcing for us that are long term, you know, long term um, virtual assistants. These aren't the one offs. These are the people that are, you know, yeah, they're they're great team members, and you're right. There, there is, um, you know, a lot of the time working with people from different countries, people are worried about accents and that type of thing. And like you say, they, uh, you know, they're they they um, they speak perfect English. Um, they, you know, their writing skills are better than mine. I can tell you that right now. They're highly educated. We've got I think three or four people on our team with masters. Um, you know, they're yeah, highly educated. They're amazing. Let me just um, pause here for one second and explain to um, our listeners who Mark is and what BA is. So um, I uh, I contract Christine to to um, to do the, the social media stuff for my company and my business. But Christine actually goes to Mark who has BA uh, business. And Mark is, is somebody who's actually lived in those parts of the world, knows the contacts in those parts of the world. So he goes out and he hires, again, first class people, not just anybody or just people that you're not going to trust or just that's why you talk about security and you talk about uh, when we talked about security and we talked about having the top of the crop of everything yeah. you know from writers to um internet users and, and, yeah, and administration, IT's and all IT, of that video you name it yeah. mm -hmm. So it's a process where, you know, Mark goes there and then Mark brings the best and he has also people there that are bringing the best and then Mark brings it to you and then you bring it to us. Exactly. That's exactly it. Yeah. Mark's, Mark's been in this business for about 30, 30 plus years um, and, and he is in the Philippines quite often. He doesn't live there anymore, but BA International is, has been supplying virtual assistants, you know, for, for quite a long time and he has the best pipeline, you know, I mean, hands down, I mean, the the... the the quality that he's brought to our company is is amazing, and and like I say, after ten years having virtual assistants for ten years, I mean, I, 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 there's no reason I would I would go anywhere else. And 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 again, I want to mention one thing else. Chris, sorry to cut you short, Christina, is that the listeners, the realtors, can go directly exactly. to Mark if they choose exactly. to, like I did. But I still found it much easier for me to. After I did that, I still found it much easier for me to come to Christine. And again, it's really, it depends on the realtor themselves exactly. and what they want to do. As well, another option is that the realtors don't even have to go to Mark. If they want, they can go on by themselves on their own and find from they can go on and sort yeah. through. 
Odesk and um, the other website that we've mentioned, Odesk Elance, and Elance. Exactly. Elance yeah. Yes, yes, exactly. And that 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 that's a great point, Tahani. Actually, a lot of um, a lot of our clients, our viral factory clients, you know, we do the blogging for them, but they go to Mark and they get somebody, um, they, they have a virtual assistant to do other tasks for them. They have them doing their Kijiji posting. They have them doing their cold calling. I mean, they have, they have, Mark can find uh, um, assistants that will do cold calling or, you know, like a lot of the, a lot of those other tasks, bookkeeping. Um, Mark has supplied me with bookkeepers, but yes, there's, there's a lot of opportunities um, to, to, um, it, it, just so many possibilities. I mean, that's the best part. Every it depends on what the agent needs. Really, it depends on what the realtor needs. But they can definitely go directly to Mark, and they can definitely go to Odesk. You know, it's all it's all a little bit of trial and error, and it depends on what works. Um, you know, and uh, and it depends on the tasks that they that they need to outsource. Um, you know, one of the other one of my other favorites, and I don't know if you've used this one, Tahani, but have you ever used Ninety Nine Designs for any of your graphic yes. work? Yes. Yes. Uh, hands down. Fantastic. One of my yes. favorite and. You know, and then that was, that's another, um, uh, you know, another example of, you know, outsourcing to other teams. Um, 99 Designs is, um, if you have any uh, graphic, um, basically graphic design work, what you do is you go and you post um, a contest. And so if you need a logo or if you need a brochure design, whichever that is, uh, you go and you post a contest and you basically say, this is what I want. I want it, you know, a contemporary look. I'd like it to, you know, um, whatever you have I like these colors I like whichever and then you put a price on it and they have a guideline for pricing and then what happens is all of these designers come in and bid on it so I know when I was going to do um, for instance my business card my business cards I posted a contest and I got I think the first time we did it we got 170 entries so this is 170 designs coming back that I can look at and provide feedback on and and this is from all corners of the earth and so um, you know the best part you know, and again, that's that's outsourcing. You know, and and the best part about that is that you only pay the ones that you choose. So, exactly. out of all these ideas that you get, you only get to pay the one that you pick and choose. And for example, how much did it cost you to do that business card? Christine? I think it was like two hundred bucks for the logo design and the business card layout. See, like how amazing and that I is. You know, one hundred seventy out of one hundred seventy designs. Normally, if you go you know, to a company, you get maybe two or three and you don't get as many revisions. I mean, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. That is pretty as amazing considering that I'm doing right now a logo for Tahani International. I was speaking to some of the people that are here in Canada, in Toronto, and some of them charge close to about $2,000, you know, anywhere actually from about $900 to $2,000 for designing the logo and having that business card for mm -hmm. you. So... A huge saving for the realtors to use this website exactly and you know Tahani sometimes you know sometimes there are like I don't want to I certainly don't want to knock the uh, um, you know the, the graphic just like the graphic designers because I think there's sometimes a time and a place where yes. those types you know you really you may need to um, employ those type of services but often, you know, if it's if it's a simple logo or if it's if it's just working in your yes. broker, flyer, flyer exactly. for realtors. Yeah, yeah, you don't necessarily need to, to to spend your dollars there. Then you can go and you can save those dollars and put them into you know something else that's really going to make you some money. You know, put this it into is, Facebook ads. This is beautiful. Thank you, Christine. This is amazing stuff. Okay, let's keep okay. going. Wow, that's a lot. So, yes. so we we've talked about now like the foundation that we you know that we need. So you have to make sure that you're on the cloud and, and you have to make sure that that. You know, you've, you've got the secure password um, yeah. sharing program so that, you know, your virtual assistant can actually work with you. We've talked about where you can find virtual assistants. So you can go to Odesk, Elance, you can go to VA International, 99designs, depending on what you need. Um, you know, Viral Factory, of course, too. Um, so now what happens is, um, you know, how do you, how do you train these people and how do you manage them? Because <laughs> it's all great up till now, but this is where most people fall down. <laughs> this because is exactly hard to right. This is exactly right because I went through all of that and then when it came to the training, that's when I said, I don't have time to do that. Exactly. Yes, exactly. So go yeah. ahead. Yes, please. You know, so, um, and I had to learn this the hard way. So in my, I, I've used virtual assistants in my investment company as well as our, our marketing company. And I think um, because we're using assistants that are coming from uh, other countries, um, I I would do a Canadian geography. I wanted them to understand where, you know, Canada was. And, you know, probably, Tani, it took me, like, after the third time where I was having this geography um, lesson, I realized, um, geez, Christine, maybe you should record that. <laughs> and then they can just watch it on their own as opposed to me 
sitting down and doing that. So I kind of had to laugh because as much as I've you know been ingrained to to talk about systems and repetition and that, it's it, it took me you know three times of, of talking about all the provinces and and uh, uh, to realize that when you're training your virtual assistants, you want to um, have a training program in place and you want it recorded because. Um, you know, I think in the virtual world, systemizing, that's what you're exactly. saying is that you're putting a system together, exactly. you're systemizing. Yeah, it. exactly. So now everything that I have is all recorded. And because I think, you know, it realistically, you know, virtual assistants, it's great, but you do, you probably do have a little bit more turnover. So I think that's why systemizing is, you know, a little bit, probably even more important. So when, when somebody's coming on board with our, with any of our companies, um, you know, we make sure that, that they come in and there's usually a, like a, a four step, um, a four-step process, and, and they all include videos, um, and and they have to go through that checklist. And uh, you know, we we make sure that you know they they understand our our software. You know, what do we use for software? Who are the people in our company? Um, you know, where do we work out of? You know, all that information. So so if I was an agent, you know, like you know, if I was a real estate agent. Um, I would do the like the ones that are listening. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, what I would be doing is the same thing. It's okay. You know, this is this is who I am. Um, you know, this is what my specialty is. Like, you you want to um, record that so that anytime you work with somebody, they know you can just say, okay, you know what? I need you to watch this this series of videos. It doesn't have to be professional. You can just turn your Skype on, record it. It doesn't. You don't have to have anything. But give them the basics. You know, this is my area. You know, this is where. This is the area that I farm. You know, these are the types of properties I have. Um, it's important if you're using people from other. Um, you know, from other countries, they don't necessarily know what a bungalow is or what a two-story is or, you know, and they don't have to necessarily understand that to do some of the jobs they're doing. But I really like, I really like for them to understand, you know, have a, a sort of a basic understanding, uh, you know, of, of um, you know, have a basic understanding if they're, even if they're going to be doing any administration work for me, the more understanding they have, the more that they can expand their role and help you. And then that's what I find most of them eventually start to do is they want to, you know, as they take on more tasks, they, if they understand your business, you know, then it, then it helps. So that. Oh, that's an amazing idea, Christine. Really. I actually never thought about doing that at all. So this is great. Yeah. Videotape what you're all about, your business about, your niche, who you work with, the type of clients you're trying to attract, the area that you're in. Oh, that's awesome to give an idea. That is so simple. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then, you know, and it's no different, you know, really, we should be doing that for the people who we work with across the desk from because it still would save us time. You know, and, and uh, you know, so it doesn't matter whether it doesn't matter if you're working virtually or face or face to face. Um, and then what I do um, is I also use the same uh, the same tactic. So I, I do the same tactic when I'm recording tasks that I'm going to give um, to my virtual assistant. So what I do is I actually record. Um, you know, you can use um, Camtasia. Um, you can use GoToMeeting. There's a lot of screen capture tools that you can use out there. And I record exactly what I want them to do on the task. So I, um, you know, if, if it's um, posting on Craigslist or if it's as simple as posting to my calendar, I will actually take them through it. I show it to them once. Then if they have any questions, they don't have to bother me because I will be busy. As in our, our listener's case, you guys, you need to go sell houses. You don't need to go and show somebody three times how to add stuff to your calendar, how to post on Kijiji, how to do whichever. You don't need to do that. So I like to record, I like to record those sessions. Then what I do is, um, and especially for the agents that are just starting out with this, these systems, the next task that your assistant will have is to take that and put that into a training manual. So you have them create the training manual for you. Because That's amazing. a lot of the time we think, you know, as as the owners of the company, as the agents, that we have to come up with all this stuff and we have to hand it to them. Well, that's actually their job. Like as you're taking them through it, train them so that if if they are gone tomorrow, you have everything there and you don't have to retrain. And and then it also helps. Great tip, great tip. Yeah, and then that helps as well, again, for the people that you're working with, um, you know, in-house in as well, too, because um, if, you, if you have that system with your virtual workers, you also need to have that system with the people who are face-to-face who are -face with you. I have a, a great, um, it's, a, it's a task list, um, but it, it's, um, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm going to give that to your listeners as well, Tahani. Um, and what it is, is it basically, it, it, it's, to help you, um, it's to help you outsource the tasks. So it, it will, you have to describe the task, and then you need to list off in detail what the steps are, and then you need to let the, um, you need to write down, you know, is there any passwords required, like which programs, which software they have to use, is there a due date, is it a recurring task, you know, and then I usually put on a scale of one to ten, you know, the difficulty, you know, of what this is. Then it's very, very clear to, um, to the assistant 
what they have to do, when they have to do, and and there's just no gray areas because I find that there's that no, no miscommunication. No miscommunication. It's it's clarity, especially when you're working. That the I find the people that I'm working with virtually, they want clarity and they will ask a lot of questions. And filling in a sheet, I found, has really cut back on the number of questions because then I'm complete with my directions, as opposed to you know, I mean, we're all busy people, and I know what agents are like. You know, we're trying to when I'm trying to get them on the phone. You've got three people on one call. You've got like people waiting at another house. You're trying to get some closing documents done, and so really, so true. Yeah, it's it's. You know, uh, speaking of that point that you just mentioned right now, your outline. I would say it's like a guideline or an outline yeah. that you use, yeah. right? Um, I remember that when I first hired an assistant and through Mark and we got her going and I'm like, okay, so what are we going to do? She comes in and I give her something. A few minutes later, she's done. And then she looks at me and she's like, Tahani, I'm done. What else? And I'm like, whoo, you know? And then I felt like I was not prepared, not her, but me to so speak of what you're talking about. It's so important that for us realtors to know exactly that, you know, this and this and this and this, so that when someone starts working for you and you're hiring someone for either one hour, four hours or a full day that they have something, a guideline to go by. And these people, they truly want like, you know, uh, like, exact what to do when to do it so it's almost like a guideline again exactly, of what to do yeah. so so that's something that is very important i guess that we need to touch on is that the realtor knows exactly what they want and um and have that ready detailed and give it to the assistant right exactly and i think Tahani, you hit a really good point i you know we talked about you know wanting to um like you said you wanted to hire the services out that worked out easier um you know you really have to think that when you're going to hire an assistant, you have to keep that person busy and you, you really have to, you have to have a game plan for that. And that's not as easy as a lot of people think because you have to be a lot more organized and that that's tough to do. It's tough for anybody to do. I struggle with it as well. You know, so, so really I think what the agents um, listening to think about is, you know, do you want, um, you know, do you want a specific service, um, do you want somebody to do a specific service for you or do you want somebody to work for a block of hours for you? Um, you know, and I think that, you know, everybody is going to be a little bit different. If you're organized and you can keep that person busy, then it works out well. Um, but, um, you know, you really, it, like you say, it, and everybody struggles with it. And I think that's probably the biggest, um, you know, the biggest thing, if you're going to hire a virtual assistant, you have to, you have to make sure that you keep them busy or else you're wasting your money, really. Yes. Yes. You know, so, yeah. And, uh, um, you know, and, and I think, um, you know, just, you know, a little bit on, on that note to Hanny, um, you know, sometimes even just, just writing out all the tasks that you feel, um, that you could outsource, like really being honest, like, and it's not even what you want to outsource. What do you not like doing? You know, what, what do you hate doing? And then look at that list objectively, because a lot of the time people think, oh, you can't outsource that. Um, you know, the database management, we talked about that. Um, that's actually a service that we're going to be offering. We're, um, we're just actually getting that going. So in about a month, that'll be ready to go. Um, where you can, And what is that? Um, it's, it's actually, it's called Contact Done Right. I'm actually kind of excited. I'm very excited. But similar to um, uh, what I was mentioning, that the agents will actually be able to call a hotline. So when you meet with a client, for instance, you, you meet a client, you get their information you can pick up a hotline and call in and give that information to our agent over the phone, or you can email that in, um, or you can, you know, forward, um, you can take a picture of that business card on your phone and, and send that in to us. We will go in and add that person to your database. So it's, it's, um, you will have all the information in your database. We can make any notes on it that you want. We'll then go in and add them on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn for you. So by the time you get back to your office, they'll already be in your database. So you're not going to miss out on that service. Um, you know, that's just another example of, um, you know, that sometimes is, might be more um, appealing than hiring somebody for a four hour block of time um, and trying to keep, you know, just trying to keep them maintained because that's not something that you're, um, you're going to need for four hours every single day. But when you need it, mm -hmm. you really need that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind as well, too, is, is not to get hung up on. Um, there's a lot of different services that can be that can be, uh, you know, chopped up, but make that list.
that's amazing I, we have so much to talk about but i think that we're almost uh, we've got 15 more minutes to go but i want to um touch on a couple of things christine and that is how does a realtor get started like what do you think that one needs to get started almost immediately and the other one is how do they measure their success like are they really um getting the success that maybe you're getting but not for them they don't know right they don't know what is good and what's not how do you how what would you say what would you recommend for realtors that are listening okay well you know for getting started i, I mean i think you know we, we talked about that foundation so it really is important to get the foundation in place and if you don't um if you're not really tech savvy or if you're not really um you know if you're not sure of that you just need to reach out for a bit of help i mean you know um you need to you just need to talk to somebody you know uh, usually a lot of um, a lot of the time there's usually a tech person that either somebody in the office that's like a little bit more technical i know uh, we always talk to ramsey <laughs> Your office. Yes, I know, I know. He's a godsend, but you know, somebody like Ramsey, you know, is able to help. Um, you know, if there's uh, any issues, um, any issues, but to get, you know, to get on the cloud, so you need to reach out and uh, and and make sure that you can you can be on the cloud and that you have a few changes to make. Do it in baby steps. You know, you get all your get your start getting your calendar on the cloud. Make sure that your Gmail uh, or your your email accounts are linked. So that when you go into your computer, your computer matches your phone, matches your iPad, so that you don't have to chase you know, emails around and then get all your files on the cloud. So um, if you if you don't, uh, if you're not tech savvy, find somebody that can help you out with that. Um, you know, I'm sure that um, I'm sure that I would probably go into a friend, but there's a lot of services out there that you can yeah, and most offices, like when I used to work for Remax, they had even somebody there that would help with the telephone system, somebody there that would help with yeah. the, you know, computer system. So I'm sure, yeah, there is a lot of um, people that they can turn to. Exactly. Yeah, and then I think, uh, you know, I think that, you know, determining, you know, again, you know, how to get started, determine, you know, determine what you want, and then uh, be prepared to test it out. It's You're not going to have instant success. Um it's not going to happen. And usually it takes two or three, you know, I, I really think it takes a couple of VAs really to find, you know, really to find um, that good fit. Once you have that fit, um, you know, I'm always very clear on my expectations. So I make sure that, you know, if, if I have, um, you know, my team works, um, you know, they work full eight hour days, like all of our team members do. Um, so, you know, we have, um, we have specific tasks and we have, we know how long those tasks take. So, you know, um, every day they have to submit their timesheets exactly like you know would in a regular office they submit their timesheets and uh, with the tasks that they've completed and how long it takes you need to be able to monitor that and you know so it's not just a matter of hiring them and, and not measuring you know what they're doing because that's a very good point Christine that's a very good point of measuring success and that is uh, so so how do you how do you know how long is a task gonna take I mean you know for me it, it might take me much longer to do um, technical stuff than it would say for somebody who is technical so how do I measure or how do I know how long does it take like do you is there a way to find out well I mean I think that um, you know quite often if, if I'm doing a task that I'm not familiar with what I'll do yeah. is I will you know I'll, I'll when I'm when I'm assigning the task to my assistant, you know, we'll talk about how long, uh, you know, I'll say, I'll ask her because generally, or him, I'll ask them, you know, how long they feel it will take. And then I have a check-in point. So, you know, and this is, you know, it's no different than when you're training. It, you're you're, you're yes. still training no matter if they're across the desk from you. So I have a check-in point. It's like, you know, after, if I think the task is going to be an hour, she checks in after half an hour and then lets me know. It's it's requirement they let, that they let me know if there's any, um, if there's any snags or if they need to extend that time. And then that way, it's just it's an open relationship that they, they realize that, you know, I'm monitoring as well. There's also, um, um, you know, further to that, um, when you hire somebody off of ODESK, the way ODESK protects um, its clients is they have screenshots. So because you can hire people that will play solitaire and waste your time and waste your money. I mean, that, that's the reality of that. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you're hiring. Um, but ODESC, they will, um, they capture screenshots of that, um, of that worker's camera. Now, if you're hiring um, off of VA International, like if you contact Mark and you, you have a VA through that, you can get um, uh, a software called Tahoe Meter. And again, I'll put that in the link. It's called Tahoe Meter. And it will do the exact same thing as, as ODESC. So when you have um, a virtual assistant, you can make sure that, you know, they're working on, um, they're working on your stuff. They're not playing, you know, World of Warcraft or I don't know what those games are, but they're not, 
you know, they're not off doing other things or working for other clients. So you can also monitor that way as well. It's, um, it's very common in the industry. It's not, I don't feel bad. We use that uh, for our team because that's just how we protect our business and how we protect our, our margins because we're, we're a Oh, this is so important to hear. Thank you for sharing that. Another thing that you touched on that I thought it was um, brilliant and that is the fact that you hire someone, it doesn't mean that you just hire them and you just let go unless it's a one um a one off project like yeah yeah what, exactly exactly what you're what you just said a little while ago is yeah you're still there and you're managing all these employees as if i am here in the office and i'm managing all these people that are in here so this is very important exactly. right yeah. yeah it's not it you can't just hire them and then kind of forget about them it's you know as and then it's no different than you know as as you get going with them then you can you know then it's you've yes. got a level of trust built up and 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 also yes. they've got a, a repertoire of tasks they've built up and, and they can, you know, manage that back and forth. But absolutely, that's, uh, I think that that is probably, um, I've helped a lot of um, real estate agents, um, you know, through the hiring process and I've helped, you know, watch a few of them through this. And I think that's probably the biggest, um, you know, they hire them and they just want to forget about them. I think that's probably the biggest stumbling block. And, you know, you can't do that on, it doesn't matter what business you're hiring for, you can't do that on yes. any of that. Yes, it's almost like a real estate investors. They believe that it is passive, you know, and you don't do anything. Well, in reality, you still need to manage the managers. Exactly. And that's what exactly you're saying. You, you know what? That's exactly it. And you cannot, you can't just buy that property and hire a manager and forget about it because it will come back mm -hmm. to haunt you and it will cost you a lot of money. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that, mm -hmm. uh, that will hit you every time. So. Wow, that's amazing, amazing stuff that we've covered here. Is there anything that I haven't asked but the realtors that are listening maybe need to know about Christine or? Well, you know, I, the one last point I just want to put in there, um, you know, is uh, team bonding. I, I really feel that just because, um, you know, you've met our team, Tahani, like they're awesome. Amazing. And I, I will say that I just, I think they're fabulous. And we have um, a lot of bonding events. And I think that you want to make sure like, you know, just because somebody is far away doesn't mean they want, don't want to be a part of your team. And so we actually have different events. And just because I'm in Canada and they're not in Canada, um, you know, we have different events. Um, they actually get together because most of our team is located in the Philippines. They'll actually get together and do team meals. And I, I pay for the team meals. Um, you know, we have, uh, we actually did um, these people. Oh, I felt so bad. They, they know nothing about hockey. We did a hockey pool. We did the hockey draft with them last year. So they had to learn about that. And then, you know, they, they're um, going to gang up on me this year. And I, I don't know what I'm going to have to think about. But, you know, make sure that you bond with, with um, you know, with these people. I find that um, especially, I, I find that they're very eager, eager to please. Um, they, the people who, um, one of our gentlemen, um, Angelo, I don't know if you've met him, but he had a two and a half hour commute each way every day. He's quite excited to be working virtually. He's, he gives a, give us, gives us his all um, because he can work from home. So these people are very wow. eager and they really go above and beyond. Um, so I, I really encourage that, um, you know, you'll, you can get the most out of, um, out of them by just, yeah, bonding with them and, um, and having clear expectations. Um, yes. And these people, I also find it's so easy to please them because they are, you know, just amazing, simple human beings and they just want exactly what we want. Exactly. And that is a simple life, you know, to spend more time not commuting, but with our families. And, you know, we share at the end of the day, we're all humans and, sh and share the same wants and needs. Exactly. You know, another thing, too, that you do because you have such a large team. And I remember that when the Philippines tsunami happened just recently, um, that you pulled together and, and even all of us, we felt we were yes. part of it because we felt so connected to these human beings that, you know, you were able to help. So that is like a huge shout out to you and, and everybody that helped as well. And, 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 and the email that you receive from these people saying thank you and what a huge blessing. It just, oh, it just like, you know, the hair on your body stands out just only by reading them. So... I, I, I love it when we know that we can make a difference in somebody else's life, even if we haven't really seen them personally. I mean, we see their pictures on, on Facebook and LinkedIn and all of that. But it's, um, yeah, just remember that at the end of the day, it's the same as having them right here in your office, exactly. have the same interactions, do them do what you're doing which is the fun stuff as well and make them feel part of a team and uh and if you're only starting out with one that's fine they exactly. can you can still do it can can they do it in the same absolutely. way like can the realtors is still absolutely especially with video i mean 
you know, with video conferencing, they love, you know, I, I find that um, the more interaction as a team that we can have, the better bond is, you know, so if, if it's just yourself, if you're just an agent yourself, you know, get on video chat. That's how, you know, that's how you'll bond. Um, and, and I really feel that it's, it's, it's the same as, as bonding with somebody face to face because really you feel like you you know the person you get to know them but yeah I totally think that you know video um, you know chats um, we um, and, and Tani I, I, I can't I can't leave it without saying thank you because we did have an employee who was who was completely wiped out we were fortunate it was only one but thank you very much for helping her out um, because you're so generous we really appreciated it because that meant the world to her and to us um, she is a doll she walked, um, for your listeners, um, this lady's walked um, 700 kilometers with her six and eight-year-old daughter and her husband to get to safety after the tsunami. And Tahani was very generous in, uh, in helping with her recovery. So thank you, Tahani. Yeah. That was Oh, a you're most welcome. I mean, it's, it's, you know, again, it's because of you who brought us, you know, to those people. So I thank you as well. I mean, it's just so incredible. And it feels so great to know that, you know, you can make a difference oh, in somebody else's life. So much with, you know, oh, she's, and, and they're doing wonderful now. So, yeah, I think that, uh, you know, I think that that, that, that bond is, is, it's completely achievable. And it, even if it's just one-on-one, -on -one, um, yeah, I, I think it's, uh, completely achievable and, uh, um, yeah, and, and I think that, you know, if any of your listeners, um, you know, if they have any other questions, they can absolutely get in touch with me. I'll send you the links. I have yes. I have no problem, uh, you know, answering questions because it's it can be scary getting started. Can you can you just um, say, at least even though we're going to send it to them, but can you just um, say what is the link uh, so that for those who are listening can hear it as well? Um, like the link, sorry, to Hani for to get hold of you, like how do they get hold of you, Perfect. you know, how could someone get hold of you or even Viral Factor because you might have also others that are just like me that don't want, you know, to go out and do all of that and they just want to only talk to one person. Maybe they want to try and do it themselves just like I did and then come back again and do it. So can you please um, maybe sure. uh, say what the website is? Yeah, so it's um, www.viralfactory.com and it's V-Y-R-A-L Factory. Com. Um, I'll give you my phone number too um, because I have a it's um, it's toll free so it's 888-965-9970 and if you uh, I'm at extension 2 so if uh, mm -hmm. if anybody has any questions um, it's the viral factory line but I'm being more than happy just let me know that uh, that you um, heard uh, Tahani and I speak and, and then I'll know uh, what you want to chat about and then we can, yeah, we can just talk and I can answer any questions. I'm, I'm happy to do that for you. Oh, you have been more than wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing all these amazing, you know, tips and, and websites and information and everything to make it better for these realtors are listening to this call and uh, I'm sure you're going to get many of them, you know, emailing you and calling you. You might regret uh, giving your <laughs> you know, phone number out. It's a great way to give but, back. Uh, I have no problem doing that to Hattie. Okay. So thank you so much. And for all of our listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will make sure that we will send you that list that Christine talked about. Until next time, thank you everyone and have a wonderful day. Thanks, Tahani.